A new spate of terror attacks is threatening the country's peace. Uganda's proximity to ungoverned eastern DR Congo, where the Allied Democratic Force operate, the affiliation of ADF with international terrorist groups such as ISIS and Al Shabaab, the new tactics and technology used by terrorists is making the fight much harder. But do Uganda's security forces have the capacity to fight off this new threat? We host UPDF spokesperson. Brigadier General Flavia Biokaso, Kira Municipality MP Ibrahim Samujunganda, and Kampala RCC Hussein Hood. <music> Gentlemen and ladies, thank you so much for having honored our invitation i must assure you uganda's spotlight is on you tonight because people would want to hear from you and i'm going to begin with you mr rcc resident city commissioner because some of the things that have happened have happened within your city what is going on why should kampalans be moving up and down during the times of curfew yet you should be enforcing that you are the chairman of the security committee of the district what's going on well, thank you very much, uh, Patrick, for having me. <coughs> uh, good evening, uh, viewers. Um, we all know what's going on. The entire world is struggling with the fight against COVID-19. And this has associated challenges. We are aware that uh, we are in a, a sort of a, a contradiction fighting the fight for their survival. So, but as you are aware, the right to life is a fundamental human right. And like any other government, the NRM government is mandated to prioritize the right to life. And therefore, the priority is to see that government protects its people. And we have uh, successfully achieved this as a country. Yes, we have lost a few people. Nobody deserves to lose a life. But if you are to rate the country compared to other countries, I think if you gave us a 70%, a teacher will tell you that that is a D2 or a D1, a distinction. And however, be that as it may, we have a few, a section of Ugandans, sometimes for understandable reasons, who are not ready to abide by the preventive measures. What are these understandable reasons? Of course, the contradiction of struggling to survive financially and also not to... How is that reason understandable when the president has given a policy that everybody should follow when the security forces are supposed to enforce these COVID protocols? How does it become understandable? Well, Patrick, I don't want to sound like I'm saying that it is okay for them not to... It is okay for a section of Ugandans not to abide by the rules. I'm only thinking aloud, given the level of complacence we have in the country, where you have a people who think that for a policy to be enforced, there must be enforcement officers. Right. People who think there should be a police officer or a military officer for them to do what they are supposed to do. And because we are a growing nation, sometimes you are tempted to close one eye to let certain things be, not because you want them to be, but because as a country we are yet to get there. But largely, Ugandans have really been very, very uh, obedient. They have really followed. I had challenges in the city, but you really see that there is a large section of the country, of the city, have really followed the SOPs. You have a group of people who are almost untouchables. You have a group of people who are most, more or less like the, the, the chosen few, who can flout the regulations, who can do everything with impunity, and you as RCC have nothing to do about it. No, it's not that I don't have nothing to do about it. 
we are we we continue to engage the public we continue to engage the people we continue to remind them that look what you're doing is wrong okay of course there are those and by the way today uh, yesterday i originated a list of no, what we know as notorious bars in the city that I submitted to my line minister. Wait a minute. Y the, the resident city commissioner even knows, has a list of so-called notorious bars. You want to stand by and watch and let it happen and only just give us a list? Well, Charles, administratively, there are steps we take to operate. I'll call a police officer, I'll, 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 I'll contact the commander, KMP, and his team to prevail over such stubborn people. But as we are saying, they are stubborn people. And I, I, I don't think you'd be happy to see another CC standing at a bar regularly, where you go and say, please close. You stand there until they close. After one day, they have opened. You call a DPC. They go there so there's visit. general so brokenness of the security apparatus because it doesn't have to take you. It, you only have to use the offices available for the full soldiers to do their job. You're not supposed to be doing the patrol, are you? Of course. I was only giving an example. I was saying that I don't think you like it seeing me standing at a, what? At a bar. I don't do that. The police is doing that. And by the way, a majority of them are abiding by the rules. All right. We let me let me go to Brigadier General. Let me go to Brigadier General. Yes. Brigadier General Flavia. Uh, I just want you, you speak for the UPDA fund. Probably just bring us to speed on where we are right now in the fight against terror. Whether you are on top of the situation. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, first of all, good evening, viewers, and welcome to the show. Uh, Patrick, like y yes, we. Uh, We've done, we are doing a lot. We've done a lot already as UPDF. But remember, and as security forces, because we work all, we, we combine and uh, we work together. First, but first to mention that, uh, take cognizant of the fact that yes, we have a threat around us. And uh, we are telling people that they should not take the situation for granted. Not that uh, we want them to, be, to live under fear, no. At the same time as we want them to know that th there is a threat, but we also tell them to remain calm because uh, like you're saying, yes, we are up to the game. We are above the game. We've done a lot uh, in, the, in, in, this, in, in the past, in the uh, recent past up to today. And um, I think a statement has already been released. I don't, perhaps I don't need to go back to it, but perhaps for, for also for reason of emphasis. Uh, and I want to use this time, especially under when we have had these two explosions, where people, some sections of the public had started getting panicky. And you know when you, s you get, uh, this is sometimes also a situation for uh, some members o o of the public and some politicians to jump up and say, to, to make uh, quick conclusions, uh, begin pe pointing a finger at the, 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 the security, that what they're doing is not enough, you know, we give them a lot of money, this is what is happening, why Uganda? And they want to sometimes blow the situation out of proportion. But I can say that yes, there is a threat, but this is a threat that is manageable, and we have managed it, and we shall continue managing it. And uh, this is uh, evidenced in, uh, for example, the arrests that we've made, the, the people that we have arraigned in court, the terrorists that we have arrested, the networks that we have busted, the, the, um, the, the, the trailing, the, the tracking, the knowing, putting faces to names, knowing who is doing what, knowing where they are, knowing how they are moving. So we've done a lot. I understand, uh, yes. uh, Brigadier General, I understand uh, the blast in Komambog and the blast in Lungala were improvised explosive devices. Doesn't that also indicate that people have the know-how, they have the resources, they are busy making these dangerous weapons, probably in their homes and, uh, and hiding in and plain let sight. Me, let me tell you, Patrick, that uh, those improvised things, uh, 
yes, you're right, they are, they are assembled here. But these are common things. These are things that you cannot even uh, 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 know. And the person who is doing it, who is telling them what to do, is best somewhere. And then he will tell you, go and buy this. We know whom he tells now, you go and buy a, a, a sack of this. Now go and get a can. Now go and get a battery. Now go and get this. And they sit in a room for where in their cells. Now do this, do this. Someone is out there. They have their coordinator. And this coordinator, I, I think the other time I uh, announced him, told the, the, the public. So you'll get them, he's giving instructions. We have all those conversations and little did he so, know. So why do you have to wait for something deadly to happen? You have a name, you are tracking them, you are hearing them, you are listening it's to them. Not and before we know Patrick, it, some people die. It's not, Patrick, it's not, a, it's not as simple as what you're, think, okay. you're saying. Because we, wha, when today he orders, for example, uh, when today he says go and buy a, mil, a milk can, he will keep quiet and then wait a bit to say, am I being monitored? And when he tells Patrick go and buy a milk can, tomorrow he's going to tell Flavia, now you go and uh, you go and buy um, a blender. And then you know the w they are also people. They also plan. You know, they are not quacks. They plan. O okay, they may be look stupid, maybe, but they are also smart at their game. B b ugly as it may be, but they are smart at it. So you have a young lady who perished in the blast in Komamboga. Up to now, even though the pictures were, were splashed in newspapers and, and social media and everywhere, nobody actually came out to claim the remains of this young lady. She was buried in a, in a, in, in a mass, in a grave, um, probably like somebody who has no home. And uh, I understand the man who also died in the, in the bus, nobody has come out to claim, uh, to know whether he has a relative. How many, of these, especially the perpetrators, you know, that are here and you have no idea who is coming from where, who we are, who is your neighbor, who is doing what? Isn't government, Bonara DC and Brigadier General, at least supposed to be knowing its people? I think, Kamara, that is uh, taking a bit, uh, it's a bit too far. Uh, because First and foremost, let's begin with this person who is employing this pa the, 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 this person, the employer. So, and these are the the first. Let me call even them SOPs. And this is what we've been talking about from time again, time to time, warning people: if you're going to employ Flavia, who is Flavia? So before you blame the government. Begin with this one, who is employing this person, who doesn't know? Because the first, what is the first pre uh, prerequisite when you, 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 you're going to, uh, to employ someone? Is to understand them, get their by data, get to know who they are, ask the LC. So, there are four, for you to blame, to want to put it on the government, I, I think it's a bit, uh, I don't want to to use a bad word, but I think it would be very unfair. All right, let me, let me yeah. before I come to you, Honorable Ibrahim, you know, the RSCC, doesn't it sound odd that both the victim and the perpetrator are more or less unknown? Well, this is an issue that is uh, still under investigation. And who knows, tomorrow we may get different answers. The investigations are ongoing. Well, a terrorist is a terrorist. I don't think they will come clearly uh, displaying their identity. Some are used to putting on face masks. You get it? So it's not a surprise that uh, some are not known. Okay, let me, uh, Honorable Ibrahim, you... But the other one was known, the bus. I think he was identified. But, I, but do we know where he comes from? Do the we people, know? If the people, are his people, you know what it means, the stigma around it, when to be identified with a terrorist, you know because what that the, means? The, you first said why would you want from, to claim for dead from, 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 from where get a Kamuli there, and why would they, why from, would from Kireka, and the Patrick people in Kireka have said, no, that Patrick one is to, to be not one of us, we've yes. never seen him. D really, to be realistic, would you want to identify yourself with a terrorist? No. After all, he's dead. Mm. So, 
Honorable Ibrahim, yesterday the Minister of State for Internal Affairs, General Mohosi, was in Parliament and uh, was giving a statement. And I could you know, understand the Parliament was tasking him. What, what questions were you putting to General Mohosi, and are you satisfied with what the Minister of Internal Affairs is, is telling you as Parliament? You see, the, <coughs> the bombing in Komamboka and then the subsequent one on Masaka Road. <coughs> are making us debate issues that we've debated before. Mm. The capacity of the state, the presence of the state itself, the reaction of the state. The fear in the country is that you don't know where it is going to happen next. The state wants the population to be calm. Please be calm. This matter we are going to deal with. We are going to dismiss it as a, either small or something. As no, we are not dismissing are, anything. That they are, they are able mm. to manage. But you are managing. Um, for me, the problem with the debates in this country, including responses from the state, is that uh, it's like something that has been has that each time you have a problem like this, the answers are going to be the same, mm -hmm. <laughs> quick. So the impression created is that you have a state that is very effective, a state that is, is, is very present. Issues of bombing, I've even seen the president before I came here. <coughs> 1997, I was finishing university. I decided working for Monta. The main actors in stopping the bombings in Kampala, the main actors at that time, you had, I don't know what rank it was, I think it must have been a brigadier, Henry Tomukunde. His treasurer at that time was, I think now is a major general in term in uh, Mujenyi. So the main actors became very rich after that episode of 97 that the president was talking about, 97, 2001. The president also said the person who killed the policeman is a deserter. What do you issues mean? Of what issues do you mean of they violence. Became, what do you issues, mean they became very rich? Is, issues of violence. The rich how? Mm, issues of violence and security are sophisticated. Sometimes the investigators must be the one to be investigated. Captain Mujen, you know, eventually became a brigadier and a quick a major general. He was the one buying all markets in Kampala. He had been the treasurer. At that time, the, they had something like a task force. And on a weekly basis, they were getting 600 million shillings. It was a lot of money at that time, 97, to fight terrorism in Kampala. Both of them became rich. I remember a story that caused us problems in Munta, written by David Chibiriges. Now uh, he died. Story of Tumukuna and how he was buying uh, cattle from Wankole, <coughs> right and left. If you read the report of the uh, ghost soldiers in UPDF by Amama Mbabazi, Salim Sare, and uh, David Njafuza, the war in Northern Uganda persisted because uh, it had become a very big business. At one time, a battalion meant to have seven so 700 soldiers had 270. It even caused the director of records in UPDF problems, Brigadier Sabit Mutengesa, uh, Major Sabit Mutengesa, until he flew to London. Because in one of those reports in Tano, he drew a cover and said it's not possible that uh, the, 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 the money we spend on buying coffins is going up but the money of salary remains constant. So you continue claiming the same amount of money. So the, the, these particular investigations, while we are going to be told we have a threat, which by the way is possible, it is true. I, I think if I'm, I'm getting you clear, <coughs> you seem to suggest that then and maybe now there was a creation of, of a crisis and some people were, 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 it, it, were it earning it from it. It is possible. You have had UPDF soldiers selling guns to Al-Shabaab in Somalia. It is possible. That's why you need thorough investigation to know 
why we have this problem. And I don't want to be very quick in uh, blaming ADF like I've seen the president do, I see everybody. But when we need we need to do proof. We need to do we need to these allegations. <coughs> so, so there is a possibility. These, these, these are not allegations. Yeah, we need the proof. So because you see um, you're taking us back to what happened during the in Congo. That history it's okay. We are dealing with a different situation now. Do you have any proof? Uh, proof that of what has happened uh, uh, proof it is what? internal business as you're insinuating. I am telling you when you are doing investigations, you don't announce the the, 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 you, you don't make conclusions before you have investigated. You are saying they are investigating. No, uh, the trouble is that you are in a hurry. Not in a hurry. Listen, listen, then you will understand uh, uh, if you uh, don't uh, know. Uh, honorable. I'm talking about something I have covered all my entire yeah, life. That is okay. You uh, have so the, the war there, in northern the Uganda evidence? delayed because it had been turned into a business by senior UPDF soldiers. You have a report into the ghost soldiers. Well, if you don't know, uh, uh, maybe you are too junior to no, know. I'll give you a copy. We have uh, read all those the bombs in Kampala of 97, 2001. The people who were fighting the bombs became rich. They, we don't know which business they were doing. But after fighting bombs, they were in Kampala buying markets. And I'm not saying we must blame them. I am only saying we need thorough investigation. We don't need to come to the conclusion very quickly. If there are bombs in Temangalo, do we, I mean, in Komamboga, do we immediately blame ADF? You remember when Kawesi was killed, a hundred people were arrested, and we are told this was the handwork of ADF. Later, you had policemen themselves being arrested and also accused of the same crime. That's why I'm saying, you see, the trouble is that the state actors would want to present a picture of people who are in control, yes, people uh, who uh, know, no, yes, no, 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 people no, who know when the crime has happened, who has committed okay, it. Allow me just make a I am only asking yes. you, please do thorough investigation. Uh, then let us just know. Just uh, allow me uh, just uh, uh, res uh, comment on what uh, the Honorable has just said, uh, calling for thorough investigations. But I know that um, we've, like he's saying, we are on this every day. We are the people who are in charge uh, of security and all these events happening. We may not uh, deliver to the expectations of like Honorable Sanjay and the rest, but at least, and, and uh, we, are not, we, we do not rush to say ADF. Mm. We have reasons, we have evidence, and we, and we take track and talk of how these things have been moving, or how events unfold, how the terror cells started how ADF has been around how it started its terror how it's it operated within when it was still in the country and it, it how it has continued operating where it is now and how it keeps on coming for example uh, when the president has just I, I, I unfortunately I was traveling and uh, my radio was not okay but he was he mentioned that these people because, because uh, when an incident happens, like it happened in, in, uh, uh, in uh, the death of the daughter of uh, Jeno Katomba, the people, the, 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 the faces, and they, they get the names and the tracks and they put, they, they sometimes they put faces. Sometimes it takes long to put a face on an action. It may take a year. I've seen cases, I've al I always hear when I sit here in Uganda and people say, but how can this take a whole 10 years, a whole 15 years, a whole 20 years, and it has never finished? When did, for example, terrorism start? I don't know what happened before Al-Qaeda, but Al-Qaeda started, it changed into, it went into ISIS, it went into what? It is something, and, our, and for example, look at US. US entered into Afghanistan. Thinking it's fighting Maya Taliban terrorism, it has gone away after 20 years with nothing, mm -hmm. with nothing, with a situation worse than uh, uh, perhaps how it, it, it found it. Therefore, when you are talking about terrorism, when you are talking about the complex web of this person and the linkages, of course, when you're in, uh, in your opening statements, you talked about technology how these people are using technology. Yes, they are using, they are using technology. They, also, they are speedy. And we are dealing with people who do not have uh, sense in their lives anymore. Someone who is willing to bomb himself for as long as he has taken 
a few others. Uh, the, 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 uh, we are dealing with the people that have decided to, to have ideology of, like the president says, ideology of identity. Mm. I'm, f I'm fighting for this. So, so what, yes. is, what is radicalizing mm. therefore, young people to that extent here in Kampala to accept, like for example, the guy in Lungala, you know, strap yourself, maybe uh, a bomb on your chest and go on and, and blow yourself. What can you but do? But uh, Kamara, this is a uh, brief on that one. You see, like we're saying that uh, this terrorism thing is not something that was born here. You know how movements, are mo you know, how movements keep on like going and growing and metamorphosizing and doing what? You know how uh, people, and on not only here in Kampala, but elsewhere where it has happened, elsewhere where we have had terrorism, you know, and you always, and you're wondering, that it is the same way, wonder how a person can be indoctrinated to the extent of bombing himself or herself, because we've seen women accepting to be suicide bombers, and you wonder, and this has happened in Uganda, it is in UK, it is in U US, it is everywhere in the entire world. Therefore, it's... Uh, I mean, Ugandans or, or, or Ugandans are, 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 are human beings. We are the same species. We have the same genes. They have the same genes like the other ones. So it is. A, it, yeah, it, it's a bit funny, but so yes, is, it is, happens. Is there anything to sainthood that you can do? Because if there are young people who feel excluded, whose livelihoods have been curtailed, it's not who excluded. feel who, okay. who, who feel they're not uh, partaking on, on the national cake. Uh, they are a fertile ground for whoever is going to preach them w that kind of ideology to become very uh, radical. You so what do you do? You'll be surprised, Peter, and that is not actually true, that they have been excluded. Well, that they are, that, that they are not, that, they are not sharing the, in the, 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 that's what in the, the national cake. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, the politician. Okay, uh, <laughs> but before I get to that, uh, Patrick, you see, I don't enjoy speculation. When you ask a question and you want an answer, instead of giving a brief background, I take you through the entire history of uh, 10 years ago and what happened. I think that's ex escapism. I think our honorables, like Honorable Semuju that I respect so much, by the way, because of the time he has been in service, should stop escapism. We are aware that ISIS, it's too hot. ISIS came up and claimed responsibility of what happened in Komambo. Unless our good MP is saying that he's not aware. So for him, what he's enjoying is the chopper and how Colonel so and so did what 10 years ago. We are facing a challenge as a country and government is managing it. And you, a member of parliament, you should be honorable enough really to face the truth and say, look, let's put the differences aside. You see what happened the ninth the, in the US, the attack on the, on the, on the World Trade Center. 9-11. Yes. Really, there was no Republican, no Democrat. It was a nation united. And for us as a country, we should stop trivializing politics. We should look serious. So I expect us to be honest enough and say, look, I don't think it is by accident that those guys are claiming what happened in Komambog. So this is an issue. And security operatives have come up, ISO has come up, to tell us how many of their plans, many of their attempts have been failed. And instead of giving some credit to government, you're saying, you see, in the other, uh, the, the Congo deal, uh, really? So anyway, the issue of young people, it is really an issue that as a government we must think about. Because personally, I feel challenged because, yes, we have a lot to do as a government. We have a lot to do to ensure that everybody is economically liberated. Of course, it is an impossibility that you find any nation in this world, even the superpower America, even the Japanese and Chinese, they are very, very developed, but you still find people struggling for a source of livelihood. You find the jobless, you find if a superpower like America still has challenges of unemployment. How about us, a developing nation? All right. So therefore, 
government has come up with initiatives. And I don't want to bore you by telling you about Emioga and its associated challenges, the youth livelihood, <coughs> and so many other economic empowerment programs that government has put in place to try to fight poverty and unemployment. And we are sure that we are moving in the right direction. It's not being adequate, but at least there is hope. And many younger people, at least those who are targeting the available opportunities, are benefiting. Those who think throwing a stone or taking marijuana and maybe following a semujunganda on the street, those who think that will benefit them are the ones who are losing. All right, Honorable. Uh, Honorable Samu Junganda, Brigadier Flavia, and Buana RCC Hussein, we're going to take a break and the, on the spot we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On the Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are the RCC for Kampala, Hussein Hood, the spokesperson of the Uganda People's Defense Forces, Brigadier General Flavia Biakwaso and the Member of Parliament for Kida, the Honorable Semuju Ibrahim Nganda. Let me begin with you in this segment, Ibrahim. How do we m move from here? What should the people, because I know the Ugandan population used to be very vigilant, and uh, we seem to have relaxed as a people. Uh, and I think whereas the UPDF is a tough fighting force, it is also enjoying the support of the people with their vigilance. But that vigilance seems to be waning. <coughs> so let me before I come to the vigilance, answer the, um, the RDC, <coughs> who thinks that uh, by becoming an RDC now you'll have Uganda more than everybody. So you must now be the one inviting people and measuring who loves Uganda and who But that's not what he has said, it's a module. Exactly. Uh, <coughs> really? Yeah? Exactly. <laughs> okay. That's my interpretation okay, of what or, or, saying. Okay, that's what you're You have your own okay. interpretation. We say these things because they are very painful. For you, maybe because of the job, you may not say them. That we pass money in parliament and it ends up in people's pockets. And they are profiteering by, by, by scaremongering. And not one, but history has showed that many of them, that is their enterprise. That's why we say them. Uh, but I can understand his background. So we have some wealth the creators. <coughs> some <laughs> we have. Engage. These are the wealth creators engaging in, in this kind of business? Maybe that's what the president was saying. What is the creators? <laughs> in their own reports, reports of the military. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the moment you have a, a problem like this, the first thing is to do investigation. Not to invite everybody to join you in, in condemning sometimes preconceived enemies. Terrorism exists. There are people who are involved in it. But you must investigate for you to come to the conclusion. I remember when this uh, young man in Norway shot people. On an island. The first statement was that this is a terrorism attack. Eventually, what they said is not, even America was very quick in condemning a, a terrorist attack in Norway. These days they have learned that before you make an announcement, first investigation, because you're going to embarrass yourself. You arrest 120 people that they have killed Kawes, they are ADF, and later you are arresting more but than But it can be a terrorist, no, it, a domestic it, 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 terrorist attack. It's possible. Without links. And, with I, and I am not, saying, I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying it is not possible. Yeah. That the Norwegian guy calm, killed people, it was there. Calm, and calm and to that give, use of we usually we give different calm, lines. Come to that conclusion after investigation. That's all that I am inviting. I'm not saying it is not possible. It is a possible a hundred times. Because this would, would not be the first terrorist that we have no, in we, we, we have different Come lines. Come to that conclusion. Don't rush into action. No, you put different lines. You put, so, uh, Nanda, you put some, you, you, you first create and, and, uh, and put some possible I don't know what, like the way you do assumptions. Then you come with lines and say, then could be terror, could be crime, you could uh, be you this. Don't announce until you, them, you don't announce them like they are no, but, but you, you, conclusive investigations. But, who announces but them? the point I make is that mm. uh, the suspects are many, including some of those who are investigating. That's the point I make. Okay. So when we are investigating, we need thorough investigation to know <coughs> who was behind and what the motive So the conclusion is. definitely when it's drawn, that's when it you must come up be and after say thorough investigation. 
I remember one of the so, commentators. Uh, uh, Ibrahim, you, yeah. you think an army that has been able to keep this country together, whether you like it or not, uh, has been able to fight off different, you know, insurgencies, mm. many of them, has been able to, to go to the Congo, go to Somalia and all that. All this has been done because some of these guys probably just want to profiteer and are not good at their game? I don't understand why you're even asking that question. I am not the one authoring UPDF reports. When M7 says the police is full President. of Kaukomi, I am not the one saying so. This audit has been done by themselves, not by me personally. They have done the auditing themselves. They have arrested, they are, you don't remember an army commander who ended up in, uh, in, in Ruzira? And, 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 and that, that's what was the crime? And that's what makes us actually, Patrick, that's what makes us, us a unique force and you a are, credible force. You are, you are unique, are you are unique and thorough, investigate and then give us, because, uh, give, give us conclusive. Because, uh, Honorable Ibrahim, uh, I think this actually, uh, from what you're giving, is something that we, we, we should get a credit. But I'm not denying you the credit. I'm not denying you. Please take, take okay. the credit. Okay. I am only asking you. Mm. Investigate. And that's what we do. Then come to the conclusion after investigation. And that's what we do. But the moment do. you begin by announcing results and then you, you start investigation. No problem. I am not going to believe you. So th that's the point. No, uh, uh, Ibrahim, the question is whether the, you believe the question, or not. The question, Qu that, the question that you ask, if you can be patient. Uh, okay. The, Let me be patient. <laughs> Maybe in the middle, uh, you don't have that patience. <laughs> if, if you can be patient. <laughs> <coughs> the question you ask, <laughs> trust is earned. It is not commanded. The moment the st people begin doubting the, the, the state, you had COVID at the beginning. There are people who didn't believe that Uganda uh, w was going to be affected by COVID. Actually, the first cases that we announced, people dismissed them. That's because of the trust. Mm. And that's why government has been struggling. Even with the vaccination, I've seen the president People have refused to go and get vaccinated. I have one of those who have been calling for to go and get vaccinated. How did government lose the trust? It is by creation of ghost soldiers. It is by turning security into, into an enterprise. Uh, and I'm not, many of the people who are in UPDF, people we've gone to school with, they are incredibly very good people. But sometimes the bad people are the ones who are in command. They are the ones who are in charge of the military. And yeah. they are the ones who inflated the figures. Patrick, Patrick. The, the Patrick. Inflated there's one, there's figures. one thing, but one I, thing I, I know don't, I don't want to lose. Of all the public Patrick. institutions that we have that, in that is Uganda, trusted. I think the UPDF, is, the UPDF. Is, is a public institution that still has the been, That is if trusted. Others have yes. collapsed. And, but, I, but and, and I can apologize. All the examples I'm giving are from Rwanda. <laughs> no, it uh, is in Rwanda Patrick, that a report. Patrick, I, it, I is, it is in Rwanda that a report on no, good no, no, soldiers no, no, no. that was done. Honorable, it is Rwanda uh, that we shouldn't uh, mislead that the undersized public. uniforms were imported. Uh, it is in Rwanda that they created. And I am very sorry about honor, that. Honor, honor, These are I not mean, personal Kamara. reports, but they are reports. It is an odd done. No, okay. I, I don't know how we, we got there. That. Because my question is, I, I, I covered uh, the junk helicopter, whatever. Yes. So, yeah. So, so this. I, I was happen. in Imatong Mountain with the so, late so, Kevin Azigo. So, 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 and and, and I'm saying I am saying this in in, in good spirit. No, it's not do, in good do, spirit. Do, if do, you do investigation you and then, because you see, before you around the country of how we are. The, the threat of terrorism. Okay, Brigadier, so Brigadier General. Do investigation. Who, did you, uh, did you, you can imagine? Was no, no, there, no, no, was no, there no, investigation or there wasn't? Yes, because no, 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 maybe we can just read you for doing okay. your quick investigation tell us, tell or there wasn't. No, 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 you remember what, uh, uh, the, so form, the former Inspector of General of Police, General in the military, Kari Kaihura, announced that terrorists have entered Uganda in a bus only for the bus to be announced to have been not functional for the last one year and the owners even showed pictures of where it had parked. But the whole country had been alarmed that they saw terrorists boarding a bus, and that bus has this, the, the, the bus is in Uganda, so, but the terrorists so have So where is the problem? I don't under, I even now understand the, you the need problem. You understand, I'm saying, I don't when, understand. We have, uh, uh, when we have attacks uh, like these ones, do investigation, tell us okay, who, that, the, that who, point, who point the culprits again. are, and what the motive is. P point that is what is going to but calm our nerves. No, no. But not uh, look for, okay. the, for the usual suspect, pa you announce them and then come to Ibrahim. parliament. We now want a classified expenditure in the last budget was nearing five trillion. He's now lying. it can go to seven. He's lying. 
Where, where are you even? You but, but, even but even Google. You were in the last Yes, time. I, I don't was. Have, I don't have Google. Um, so Patrick, how much was Patrick, it? Patrick, okay, one, one at okay, the time. Okay. I am lying. Brigadier. How much was it? Brigadier Abiyo Kwaso. Yes. Uh, <laughs> how much was classified uh, expenditure in the last budget? One at the time. Brigadier Abiyo Kwaso. And you were in parliament. That if you get, you want the figure, we shall get it and publish it because it's 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 known anyway. It's you not. You were in parliament. Yes. So, Patrick, uh, I want to address the issue. Of, and and Nanda is now actually diverting us. Very much. Yes, we are, uh, the, because the, when he talks of the <coughs> issue of trust, he's talking of do, you, you're not doing investigations. He's talking of a lot of things that are. He has some uh, some points in what some of the things he's saying is like those other mistakes that have been there, and. Um, UPDF is uh, is not you, you cannot single out the army and say for because uh, they are also by, by the way they are also human beings that come from the same society and same community from where the rest of the people are so if you're going to find some people that are yes like you're talking of those ones who are self seekers those ones who may steal money or who have stolen money you're not going to put it to the institution and say because the other one stole money, there are four, this institution is this, no. We accept. That's why we do the investigations and that's why it is saying that we do our own reports and we are able, we don't shy away from mentioning whoever is. So in this case, in you have done your investigation? Definitely. Because, the, because these bombs... No, the, RIDC, so the RIDC has told you they don't need to do investigation. So the guy is screaming. <coughs> Patrick, uh, that's how he pa sees. Pa pa Patrick, yes. we, are talking so about no investigation. we are talking about uh, a very important uh, scene. I mean, a, a very important thing, and something that that touches a lot on the security of the country. And we know. And this is something that we really should not play around with or try to joke around with no. because this is something very serious. That once you do not have it, you do not have the rest but of it. But you know, what I'm hearing from and, uh, Ibrahim and what I'm understanding is that the civil military relation seem to have been affected. They're even stronger. Bec no, 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 no. <laughs> no. The, let let because, me tell you. After arresting, arresting hundreds of people, you disappear. No, no problem. Yeah, yeah, problem. As yeah. long let as let we have you, arrested uh, criminals. Under, under. Your Patrick, civil military relations have Patrick, been affected Patrick, negatively. Patrick, I will tell you, not negatively at all. I will tell you that what you're seeing today, the, the kind of peace and stability we have, it is because of the support of the civilian population, the public. If we did not have the support so you, of you, the public... So you pay them by brutalizing them? We shall brutalize the criminals. That's it. We so shall not shy away. So the journalists you are beating when they are covering that the is, that was for your criminals? That, that the, we regretted okay. that one. No, 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 hold on, sir. No. We regretted that one. We even, someone even apologized for that. Where we do wrong, we apologize. And we do not condone that. But criminals, we shall definitely brutalize them. We shall get them. You that there is no, the, the no, 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 this, this hold on. For you to be yeah. on top of your game, yeah. you, you need to get social and terrain intelligence. You'll get it from the people and who are right there. And but if those people are not cooperating with they you, are cooper and the UPDF as a fighting force is finished. And this is what I was telling you, that all wha what you're seeing is because of that relation we enjoy with the public. Because, because most of these op operations, uh, like t t these terrors or what, it, they are, most of them are intelligence-led. And human intelligence. It's people. It is people who have told us that, you know, this is so and so. These are the contacts. Where else would we track these people? Where else would we get these people? Where else would we know that someone is in Nigeria? Where would you get the phone number for someone who is in Congo? If it was not a person who has told you that one. It is the people. So they are the ones who told you to arrest 120 people that No problem. Cowards. And because later you because, because when when we are looking for when we are looking for and and Nanda is pretending he knows all this. So okay, when you're look, on, yes, when Mr. you're looking Mr. for Hussein Hood, what mm. causes this impunity in the city called Kampala, where especially the men and women in uniform, um, they could even go to a bar and park their cars there and even have their escorts. I'm told even in, in Komamboga there was actually even a policeman that was showing people where to park uh, at night and yet this is supposed to be curfew time. 
people. <laughs> and by the way, the impunity is not only uh, even the, uh, you know, people with high name recognition in places of responsibility, they even decide to drive on Kampala in different ways. The impunity is just too much. It has even been infected border border riders. They no longer follow because they are learning from you. Well, it is a jungle down there. No, 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 it's not a jungle. Patrick. There's anarchy. No, pa not at all. <laughs> I disagree. Uh, first of all, it really uh, perturbs me when I see attempts to trivialize this debate. We are dealing with uh, national security. National security. Patrick, when a bomb or a grenade is detonated, it does not know the color of the person it's going to attack. Not religion, not tribe, no color. It kills. And it's an attack on the state. It's an attack on the country. And it should unite us, really. At least the least, we should be united as a country when we are attacked. At least let's show that patriotism. We have, and it's not a surprise, as a country. But, but when you hear but people like uh, Ibrahim Nganda saying what he's saying, it does not mean that he hates you, he hates her. It actually shows a man who loves his country more. No, no, no. You see, and you know, I really don't want to personalize this debate. But I'm a person who has really admired Honorable Semuju Nganda so much. At one time, he appreciated Mulago. Mulago National Referral Hospital as a very good hospital. And tomorrow you hear him praising the UPDF. And the following day he will be really cursing. So, of course, these are not surprises. But what I want to tell you, Patrick, is that uh, this country, because of the UPDF, has been able to play a great role in pacifying Africa as a continent. Because of our geopolitical interests as a country, we have been to Sudan, we have been to Congo, the UPDF is in Somalia. It's doing a lot of work to help the continent. And the U.S. has trusted us. Powers that be, they really look upon us. They look at this man who we want to think is a nobody. You're in seven. Why are they not going to other countries? So therefore, so you are the only one uh, going. So not only us, but at least we set a precedence. We know that we are at the forefront. Kenya joined us later. Other countries so you joined. don't know that but Ethiopia, we set, we set, Ethiopia we set, raided we and took we, over half of we, that country. We set a precedent, and in Africa, in the world, actually, we, the small Uganda, are not small. So if you see atoms of this nature, uh, Komamboga, and maybe the bus, you should not be surprised. Because there is envy. There is envy that this country is doing a lot, it's doing great. So when we come to discuss that, we need to be honest. As a people, how do we get away with this? Do we play the usual games, the politics? This is not about FDC or, or no. This is about Uganda. We have been attacked. And you, you come here and you say, you see, you know I'm doubting and you start speculating throughout. For me, I feel disappointed. But uh, about downtown being a jungle, we are a, a country, especially Kampala here, a city that is growing, unlike any other developing city. Surely there are those challenges of the haves and the have-nots. There are challenges of young people who are jobless. And you see, this does not mean that government is doing nothing. It's only an, an indication of the so many efforts of government to grow the country. You start uh, with the way, immunization. By the way, who, who saying, I'm not against people having jobs. In fact, I want let border border right. That's, I just I love them. They should yes, do that. Yes, I'm yes. only asking, can't you at least ensure that whoever is in this town, we just follow the rules, yes. the guidelines, the regulations? Yeah, of, of, so that, that is, is to be some order. That is my right work. Right from the ministers. That is my work. From the, 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 the commanders of the, of the army yes. to the lowest person. Let us follow the order. Yes, Patrick. That is my work. That's your work. That's everybody's work. That really speaks Which volumes it, it is about the work. No, 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 no. Of course, the state, the state, is the lead agency here. But you, the people, what are your roles as a citizen? You are the 
You get RCC, it. the resident yes, city commissioner. Yes, I've you, are, you, are, you are. You are. And, and by the way, they are very. You are presiding over chaos. Not at all. It's, this is chaos city. You see, this is the capital city of Uganda. Chaos. This is the commercial city of Uganda. Mm. This is this is everything. Seventy percent of Uganda is here. So it's not a surprise. Actually, it's a sign of growth. Growth. The economists will tell you that the growth and crime tend to move in tandem. However, of course, what we need to do is to do more work. And there are many young people, really, who are really committing to work. Of course, there are few who are being used by criminals, but a majority of young people in Uganda here are really sticking to their work. There are many corporate youth, there are many juwakaris who are doing their work. The challenge is, as young people are busy doing their work, somebody wants to see them on the street to demonstrate. Somebody wants to pay them 20000 to and buy them ma marijuana to go and throw stone at Patrick. Somebody, a political party A, wants to manipulate the young people. Instead of at least coming up with programs that can develop them, somebody is buying marijuana for them. Someone is coming up with the someone is coming up with a program and as they move on TV, they upload their pro, the, 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 the clips on YouTube to show their funders that we are working. And the funders send two, two billion, three billion. They will pick only 500 million. The rest of the money, they go and build petrol stations, they build uh, supermarkets. They, they are using young people. So that's painful. Actually, the opposition in this country is playing a great role to disorganize the young people. Okay, hold on to your point and there. And that's the problem. Oh, who'd, uh, hold on to your point, Brigadier and Honorable Samuji. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I'll open the lines so that you two at home can be a part of this discussion. You're going to see the numbers on the screen. Pick your phone and call us and tell us what you think and how we can be a part of the fight against terror in our country. And should you be in disagreement with any of my panelists this evening, that's okay, but you should disagree with respect. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. Great. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are Honorable Ibrahim Samujungand, Brigadier Flavia Biekwaso, and RCC Hussein Hood. Uh, you know, we have always known that the ADF now have their base in Eastern DRC. Their main man, maybe their commander, Jamil Mukulu, is under arrest in Uganda, but they're still there. Why don't you ask the, the Congolese government to give you freedom so that you can do a preemptive strike? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, Patrick, I can't answer uh, for the Congolese government, uh, but what I know is you that... You could uh, request they allow you go in after all you have ever gone in. Um, I know that there are some efforts towards that. Uh, I know that, of course, there are other mechanisms uh, within the region and within uh, the, 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 the AU mechanisms concerning security to me to, to that could could be used but like you're saying rightly until the, 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 the because the other one is a sovereign until they think they feel that this is a problem and therefore feel the need to actually solve it uh, we shall still uh, take some time but uh, just yes to answer you is uh, yes the, the, the attempts are there the, the, our si the, the government of Uganda, I know, has made uh, attempts to ask the other side to, up to, 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 to reach them, to reach them out. But yes, it's just talking and uh, showing signs that but we need to do this. But does the Allied Democratic Force really still 
is it still a unit with a fighting capacity? Because I'm told you had degraded their fighting capabilities. And they, they and, and they went out. Yes, we degraded it. That is why we chased it out of Uganda. That is why it it, it can no longer it uh, it has no uh, bases here in the country. But it, but sometimes it has definitely ha ha made sleeper cells where some they come. Sne sneak in and, and activate them. And there are a lot of reasons for that. And, uh, and we, we, know, we know it. We know that uh, the nature of our borders. When they go there in Eastern DRC, that you rightly said, a, a part that is uh, so huge but not governed, and then it has become a, 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 um, a host to so many dissident groups that fight within the region, because that's, that, that is where they are all. Honorable Samuel Junganda, no, but what, what do you make, what do you, what do you make so of, so the, of the, of the. Africa was still, yeah, uh, or, yes, or, or, or right, still talking. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, and um, that has made them, that has given them that, 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 that strength that we had dismantled here. But once they've been there, they've been able to recruit because they have a whole part of Eastern DRC, which is so huge, by the way, that they, 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 are now, they, they now have the capacity. And remember, they have connections elsewhere. So they also have support. So when they are there and they have support within the other terror groups, then therefore they get the, 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 the financial, uh, they get the financial support. Therefore they, can, they, have, they get the capability to, 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 to train not even their commander is in jail here in Uganda. No, but, but, but uh, have you seen Jamil a Mkuru. have you seen a force which has one commander? <laughs> Jamil Mkuru had a deputy. He had others, so they are there. Uh, the Honorable Ibrahim, what do you make of the presence of the United Nations speaking keeping force in, in the DRC with a huge budget? They are now there almost for twenty years and they seem not to do any work. That country has a history. He's still a stronger man who stayed in power, collapsed the state. And that's why you have the governance gaps in Congo. All countries that have been governed the way Mobutu governed Congo, at one time will, will face the same problem. Sudan. In the world rules, I think the UN Secretary General, how much holding in the, in the, 60s, in the 60s in the Congo? I think. Doug Hamashold. You see, the, the, when he's playing the, the many he's years, the many years of, of Mobutu, and people think they are short-term short, short -term solutions. They are not there. The moment you don't strengthen institutions, and I remember one time when I had a, t a chance to debate with Mr. M7, and I told him, the moment you institutionalize yourself and you become institution, the day you leave, that's what happened to Congo. It's not that Congo has never had a government. But an individual institutionalized himself, created that deficit, and we are paying the price. Children who are dying in Somalia, who are not yet born when Syed Bari was in leadership, they are now the ones who are fighting and dying. People who are dying now on the streets in, in, in Khartoum, who are children when uh, Bashir seized the power. And we will pay the same price. The longer Mr. M7 stays in power and becomes the institution, institutionalizes himself, he's creating that deficit. I don't know, I am, I am now 48, I don't know how old I'll be and who will pay the price. So it's unfortunate that you have a country as, uh, as vast as Congo that has uh, areas, I think, uh, five times bigger than Uganda with governance deficit. But the foundation was laid by someone who wants to stay in power for life. And each country that adopts the same method of, of governance will pay the same price. Exactly. Okay. So this lawlessness that you see in Uganda, because the confusion, I, I don't know where the other DCs are trained, because they all speak the same language. They will uh, choose uh, the, the opposition of, of, of hiring people. I don't know who was paying Charigonza to bomb uh, and Pecos Kutesa to bomb. Uh, I give petrol depot. But it's in the tone you understand. You can see where you are now it, going. It, well, there, there was an attempt, but they failed to bomb. I don't know who was paying them and how much, <laughs> how much, how them. much he was paying. <laughs> and and I will invite him. Maybe if he doesn't <laughs> copies, yeah. I'll give him. Charigonza says, and he's still alive. 
find time. I don't know who you speak to. Find okay. time and speak to them. The mobile brigade. He said his duty was to make sure people go to sleep at three, throwing bombs. When was that? If a government, ah, now he's asking. No, I want you are on the wrong forum. If no, you no, don't no, even know no, the simple please, thing, please, we know. But so therefore, they, but, but Ibrahim, there was an attempt to bomb that. those Patrick, fuel depots, but they did. Mm. Exactly. In fact, he says, thank God, our attempt failed because we could have caused. Uh, you're wrong about. You're wrong about purpose. Charigonza says in his book. His black bomb was named Akabom Katrisi. His donate bombs in Kampala to make sure you go to and go to sleep. No, be patient. Oh. Be, pa be patient. I know you will so not be because of the training that they give you. So therefore, it is a weakness not of everybody but of Congolese and their leader. That that is the foundation that he laid. So they can't, an individual institutionalized himself. He became mm. Congo. And the day he departed, Congolese are now paying. And I'm saying each country that adopts the same method of governance will pay the same price. Okay. I'm going to open the lines. You're going to see the numbers on the screen. Uh, pick your phone and, and call us and tell us what you think. Uh, where is our vigilance as a country? Um, what can you do to help uh, the military and the police in the fight against terrorism? Because I think it also have to take uh, individual Ugandans to do their part as much as we have trained military men and women to do their part. So you can, if you have a question, you can direct it to either Brigadier General Flavia or the RCC or the Honorable Ibrahim Uganda. Uh, so what assurances can you give for the RCC for the residents of Kampala? Uh, the government is in charge. And uh, the army will continue protecting Ugandans. It has been done since 1986. So that's when the army started in Uganda. <laughs> but you <laughs> see, that's why really debating with oh, some, level, let, 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 let him some level of decorum, honorable. Yeah, but you see, the, the, decorum, honorable you decorum. are the one inviting me because honorable if you decorum. said the army since 1986. No, of course I'm trying to. So you don't know I that this country was that meant, I am stretching, NRA, I am yeah. stretching mm. from 1986 when the NRM took over power. And I'm talking about the NRA now, UPDF. I'm not talking about UNLA. I'm talking about NRM. And when you try to get Please that go out ahead, go of ahead. Of course, now. the challenge is that you quote me out of context. You were, when you share experiences of the... Well, you just <laughs> like to divert in, you just exactly. quote me here. The Pequot's Kutesa are sharing their experiences of the Bush war. And I tell you, when did they do that? Then you say, you don't know. Of course, that was a war. It was a liberation war. And that's when such unfortunate incidents had to happen because the target was to liberate the country. And I did that. But because I'm asking you, you are interested in trivializing the question and trying to divert me and you say you're on the wrong forum. And I think, for me, I believe uh, you are trying just to divert us. What we know is that this government is in charge. We know it has done a lot for, for this country. Of course, it is not perfect. And th that's where the problem is. When we talk these things, to some people they think we are saying NRM or the NRM government is 100% perfect. No. There are mistakes that have been made along the way. But comparatively, comparatively, we are getting there. Compared to other governments, we are getting there. And this government is on track. We have hope. A few things, a few mistakes are happening. We see some corruption somewhere. But you cannot again attach corruption to the president as if he's the, the devil here. Even you, Semu Junganda, you'll be given an institution like the IGG, for example, and you'll fail to prevail <laughs> over all your staff. <laughs> so shall we say it is Semu Junganda? Are you the one promoting that? So we need to be honest, really, when we are engaging in these debates. Uh, we okay. really need to look our, our at time, the country. Our time is almost out. We're getting comms challenges there. Unfortunately, no one is, is calling right now. So I'm going to ask you to... Uh, I'm told you have just one person who has managed to go through. Hello. I have a call online. Hello. Okay. Uh, I have a call online. Hello. All right. I think we have comms challenges. And uh, so I'm going not to... I will not pick those calls. L let me ask you, uh, uh, beginning with you, Honorable Samuel Junganda, your parting shot. We, we need to distinguish. We need to distinguish. Uh, yes, hello. Quickly, please tell, hello. Us your, uh, tell us your name and where you're calling from. 
Unfortunately, he, he, uh, uh, I'm covering some Kamocha. Some Kamocha. Yeah, I'm uh, out. I have a teacher who is not living in Uganda. For the things that are happening, the government, the government failed to do things. So I have to know the things that are not in the Uganda. In the way, in Uganda, some things happen which the government failed to happen. Okay. Uh, we get, uh, we get no, uh, probably I just to have the call. She's just doing the work of the soul. Hmm? She can't tell the soul what to leave the problems. Sorry, all right. They are to think the person. All right. Governor, all right. What's your name, sir? All right. Uh, the caller said was calling from Kamocha. Probably in your concluding remark, Hussein, you will be able to uh, maybe answer him. Uh, I have another call online. Hello? 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 Yes, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm going to call you from Busia. From Busia? Yes. All right. You're on air, sir. I'm going from, from Busia. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Samjunganda is talking fast. But that lady is disturbing him, is wasting Mr. Stay. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much. That's your, that's your observation from Bus. You have, you have a. Try, try to protect Mr. Samujunganda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he has enough protection, doesn't he? Okay, I uh, understand we have another call online. You've decided, all of you, to call at once now when we're almost concluding. Hello? 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 Yes, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? This is George from Kampala, calling from China. All right, you're on air, sir. Yeah, I think I appreciate the smartness you have to be all of you, but I request you to give your father to just. Let's be honest and take to the point and say, I won't tell him to deviate from blame games and focus on institutions of government and see that the country do itself. Blaming, I have to say, blaming the module position of the, how do we move forward and say, okay. as EPD, as an institution and police, this is our level of what we know of this attack. Because I feel we do it a lot of game games, and I want to hear from the institution in charge of our life as if get where are we at in terms of security. Thank you so much. And we, we, we stick to our path and new political side. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for, for, your, for your comment. And maybe I am going to take the very last. I have a last call online. Hello. 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 Yes, what's your name and where are you calling from? I am calling from Gina. My name is Alexander Mugisha. Alexander, you are on air. Yes, mm -hmm. I would like to call to greet us. You know, there is no country in the world that does not do procedures and they, they come as an understand. The Honorable Bonanda is just trying to think like it. Government can achieve everything they are planning in one thing. Even I cheer at the UPDM. The land, I want to ask you in your, in your constituency. Uh, do you have one of the percent achievements? Are you with the So, let us debate with the quorum, knowing that each area has its own Achievements and failure. Thank you very much, Honorable Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have not yet uh, honorable. But, uh, oh, did you say horrible or honorable? You know, those are some things. I want to thank you. Um, I'm, I'm closing the line, sir. I, I know the many of, you, many of you would want to, but it's a question of time. And uh, the Honorable Samoju was making his concluding remark. And then we'll go. And like I think that. the <coughs> security of the regime and the security of the country and all is mixed, especially where there are DCs. The security of the state is our responsibility collectively as a country. The security of the regime is by those who are feeding off the regime. 
if we are attacked as a country, I am not a madman that I'm going to celebrate when Uganda is under attack. No, I am not a man. But we want institutions of the state that are funded by taxpayers not to take advantage of problems when they have occurred for the individuals and many of them to enrich themselves. Do a thorough investigation and we don't want the president later to come that UPDF also had Kawokomi, police had Kawokomi. Because at the beginning, the language of the RDC after Changkwans, they, they all speak the same language and mm. don't blame this one. The opposition, they have funders, they give people money to demonstrate. People demonstrate everywhere in the world when they are uncomfortable. I don't know who goes in each and every country distributing money for people. To, to, they are now in Khartoum demonstrating and they are being killed. I don't know whether life in Khartoum costs the, the, the amount of money that he's speaking about. If there are problems, let us deal with them. Honorable Burgadia Vyokwasa was with you in Parliament. There are in video fine soldiers, commanders of UPDF, but their names I is being tarnished by individuals who have turned UPDF into an enterprise, those who want to use the military to make money. If you begin shielding everybody from criticism, fair criticism, you're going to share the responsibility of everything that has gone wrong in that institution. Okay. Um, I'll begin from there that no one has shielded anyone. Uh, but I, I, w I want to address myself to the person who said, where are we in terms of security? That I didn't, but and that's where I started. I said that we want the people to understand that yes, there is a threat. A threat that we do not want to uh, sweep under the carpet to pretend that it's not there. We are acknowledging it, but we are also calling upon the people and the public to become, because we, are, we, have, we, we have shown capacity that we can handle, because we have handled, and that's why I said, and I, I gave an account of what we have done, especially from the time when these terrorists appeared, from the time uh, they killed the daughter of uh, Jeno Katumba, to the time they went to Padel, the, the, the terrorist guy, to when the, the, the arrest that was made, the the, the, the those ones that have been you killed. You know one time you arrested an Egyptian who was exhibiting in Rubogo as a terrorist. So those ones, because the, the, the terrorists, you, know, they, you can't know how, how they look like until they do it. That is why we have to suspect everybody until someone is not found to be so. So, so it's, it's all right to suspect someone and to, to even arrest them for that matter. So, uh, and uh, and uh, to, end with, uh, to, to end with assuring uh, the public, and th uh, actually I, did, I don't even need to, to repeat that because the president has just spoken and has just assured the people. We have every capacity and capability. We have built it over time to, to deal with terrorism. We have defeated so many groups. UPDF has defeated so many groups, the, uh, the joint forces, and we shall continue doing so. But in this, and, and not that there are no challenges, the challenges are there. And the biggest challenge we have is that the issue of Eastern DRC, that for as long as that issue is not yet it's settled, then these, these, uh, these things we are seeing may reoccur, because we still have a sanctuary for a terrorist group we all know. And when we come here and talk about uh, ADF, it's not, that, uh, it's not that we have not investigated, but we profile, any country profiles its security. Any country under uh, profiles the people that are, that, 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 that are, uh, that are uh, in, that, in that category. Because when, w when we get a link, or when we get a contact, we begin profiling, we, we, we follow. Of course, they go into hiding. They can hide for a year. They come and switch, switch, switch places. That was a, terror, a, terrorist, a pure terrorist work. We've seen that if someone, today, if someone today is still doubting that these are not terrorists, where we have, got, we have found someone who, is, who has bombed himself, but still someone wants to doubt, and someone still wants to say, first investigate, before you announce that one a terrorist, then there 
I'm also he beats mm. my yes my understanding. But uh, we are doing uh, we are doing a lot. We have done a lot already. Uh, the president enumerated, and I can also say most of them have been a good number have been already arrested. Others have been put out of action. Uh, 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 the, the terror, the networks, we have the networks, we know the leader, we know where he is, we know the, 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 even the family. So w we have done a lot and we shall continue All to right. do a lot to make sure that we stamp out this threat. Thank you very briefly, your parting shot. Uh, thank you. Patrick, there is a, a writer I enjoy quoting, Peter Abrahams, in his uh, novel titled A Wraith for Udomo. He says, making speeches is not the same as running a department. You see, it's very easy to talk and blame and talk subjectively. And that's where the problem is. Uh, when we are debating and you see the tone, the mood, and the attitude that you're setting, it's what sets the, the tone. And uh, we should, I think, as a country, especially at this level, embrace maturity in politics and uh, stop malice s sabotage and as long as we continue conducting ourselves in such a manner definitely we shall end up blaming one another but what we know as a government is that at least there are a few achievements we can look up to there is really hope that this country has uh, mistakes are there and mistakes are everywhere. It's not only in, uh, in Uganda, mistakes are everywhere. But amid this, all these challenges of external aggression and terrorist attacks and others, government has played its part of trying to protect its people. Under COVID, you are aware that, as the president said, and rightly so, we stopped at the second wave. Countries, superpowers, developed countries have gone up to the fourth wave. People have died in the US. You cannot compare that to what even our neighbors, Kenya here, have lost so much. We have lost only, while you cannot attribute any death to only, but 3,000 compared to 5,000 in Kenya and so many in the U.S., you feel government is up to the task. All right. And that is because of the commitment President Museveni has regularly come up to guide the country. He has regularly, and it's because of his strictness that we are protected. It's the same reason why you have Honorable Semujung under healthy. Otherwise, if we had relaxed, because he would probably not because be Because of him seven and Because of, <laughs> yes, because of the president. Okay. All right. You have survived that's the how corona. they promote you. You have RRC. survived the corona. Not pro it's not about promoting me. So that's how it's you are your promotion. It's about the facts. I am healthy because well, of him seven. You, you have survived president, the corona, Honorable. Him, Honorable people have him. died. People okay. have died. Okay, and okay, gentlemen and, and Brigadier. We should give credit where it's due. All right. I, I want to thank you so much, uh, gentlemen yeah, and ladies. About to say Honorable the Ibrahim Nganda, <laughs> I thank you. Brigadier General Flavia Vyekwas, I thank you. RSC Hussein Hood, I thank you. And all of you who have been a part of this, uh, I thank you for your great company. And uh, sometimes you can hear these people maybe disagree, but I believe just because they love their country and everybody wants to think maybe taking a different route. So it will take about the responsibility of every Ugandan in the fight against terror. I know the UPDF have done their part, and I can believe they have our back. Uh, I remember back in the 90s when the UPDF, uh, I knew it as a serious fighting force that was almost invisible to the enemy. We want that UPDF of the past that can be able to rout out an enemy. Good night, and God bless Uganda.